Hello everyone, Bridget Casey for scrapbookpal.com. Today we're going to be working with the new Tim Holtz Thinlets Colorize Pumpkin set. And we're going to use that rounder pumpkin. And I also grabbed the cats because what's better for Halloween? Um, and I thought I was going to use that little one perched up there, but I changed it out. So, but still fun cats. So here are a look at the Distress Oxide colors we're going to be using. We'll be adding a few additional as we go through. On the back of the die, you can see here it lists A orange and A green. So it gives you an idea to match to the image that's on the front of the packaging. We're going to begin with Lucky Clover. And we're using this, which was the A green. So this is basically for the stem of our pumpkin. I'm showing you it's blending beautifully. Whenever I get into the Distress Oxides, I want to use all the colors, so be careful uh, when you start ink blending. It gets so much fun. So I'm going to go in with Pine Needles for the darker version, um, the darker layer of my stem. And I'm just using a little mixed media tool to kind of hold that in place to avoid getting inky fingers. But as you all know, when you play with Distress Oxides, inky fingers will come. So I'm checking it here and I really didn't like it. The greens were too similar. So I decided to add some Twisted Citron to the top of that to really lighten up that color, the Lucky Clover that I put on. And that's the great thing about the oxides is that you can lighten colors and layer colors. I really love these inks and I just... I need to play with that more often. Uh, so I'm using Rusty Hinge for my darkest layer of my pumpkin. And as I was beginning, I thought, all right, that's pretty good. You know, I like that. That's a pretty good pumpkin color. I'm pretty confident in this. And then, <laughs> you know, we start adding layers. So I even added more rusty hinge around the edges so it would be darker, hoping that that would be enough to create a difference between the layers of my pumpkin. But as you will see, it did not work that way. Um, so we're going to come in with carved pumpkin. How apropos we're doing a pumpkin. Uh, and I'm just blending that on. And I've switched from my mixed media tool to just a piece of masking tape, kind of trying to hold that down. But um, I still am covered in, I'm very colorful with uh, Distress Oxide inks, which is the fun of them, I think. Um, as I said before, I keep saying it, so it must be true, right? And then I'm coming in with my spiced marmalade for the third layer of the pumpkin. And then I check it and I'm like, whoa, way too close, way too close. So I figure I'm going to keep going and I'm going to lay on the final layer of spiced marmalade on that. And I'm thinking while I'm blending this, what I'm going to do to fix this. And we bring in squeezed lemonade. So that's going to lighten up the uh, layer that I used of the spiced marmalade. It's going to lighten that and give it kind of a nice bright kind of glow. And I really like this orange yellow combo. I was thinking like for candles or a glow of a window in a winter scene that that would be kind of a great combo. So I'm excited to save that one for future projects. And I think that's really the fun of playing with Distress Inks is you find new combos that you can go to for lots of things. So for the final layer of the pumpkin, I'm going to use the fossilized amber. And I love, this is just such a gorgeous yellow color. I just, every time I pull these inks out, I fall in love with them all over again. I'm trying to be careful because they are a little bit of a fiddly piece. So I'm trying not to bend them. Now for the cats. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to cover them with weathered wood. And so I'm getting them covered. I'm getting both the face piece there's a piece that you can pop up on the face and then the cat. So I'm covering them. And I noticed as I was applying the ink that you could get a neat texture from the blending tool. So I decided I'm put the blending tool on its side and I'm adding kind of darkness where I think it would be darker, but that was not working. So I pulled out the black soot and I'm still using the side of the blending tool to add kind of a shadow to one side of my cat in the back of my cat. And I'm going to do the same thing. I added it to both sides of the face. Um, and then I'm going to do that for my other cat. We only use one cat on this project. But to add a little bit more texture and dimension, I just put my ink in and I'm 
tapping down my brush and it gives these little like dots on my cat that came out super cool. I was super stoked. Now we're going to go back and the rusty hinge layer, we're adding ground espresso. It would be on the uh, ground, so it'd be a little darker. And I even added a little bit to one of the pumpkins at the base to the second layer and then found my problem is it was blending too much into each other. So I decided to go back and put the carved pumpkin back on that um, and let it let it be. So now that everything's colored, we're going to put things together. I just have a little bit of glue down there on my little masking tape, and then I'm switching to my Tombow permanent tape runner, and I'm putting some of the things together. Keep in mind, if your Distress Oxide ink is still wet, it may not glue together using this method. So you may have to either hit it with a heat tool or let it dry. But I did a few of these, so I did have a bit of drying time in between. So they seem to be going along pretty well. So I have my pumpkin all assembled here and I assembled the other two off screen and my cat, I'm just going to put some uh, foam, a foam square behind the head and pop that into place. And then we have the two cats and we have three pumpkins. I love how the colors came out. Now we need a background. We need some place for our pumpkins to go. So we're going to start with Dusty Concord. I kind of wanted like a dark night. I could just see like at the edge of a farm and the sun had set and it was kind of that beautiful purpley um, sky with some blues. So I came um, with Dusty Concord first. We've now moved on to Villainous Potion, which is just stunning. And once we are done with that, we will add some blueprint sketch. Then at this point, I was thinking, wait a minute, I don't have any grass for my pumpkins to sit on. And in Maine, we wouldn't really have grass. It would be greenish, <laughs> but it would be dying because of winter. So um, I came in with the pine needles, again, apropos for Maine, and um, I'm adding it just to the bottom. And I'm not trying to blend it perfectly. I liked that texture there that I had had. And the final step for me was to add some black soot around the edges. And once I've done that, that finishes off my blending for my panel. Now we've got to add some shiny, as my husband would call it. We're doing that with the Nouveau Mica Mist in Aspen Gold, which is just absolutely stunning. And it did not pick up the color. The color did not soak through. Some of the white uh, in that landed in dry areas did not um, pick up the color of the Distress Oxide. And so some stayed white and some blended in, but I'm okay with that. Now I'm going to use from the new release from Lawn Fawn, the Simply Fall Sentiments for the Happy Halloween. Get that centered, pick that up, and I'm going to uh, heat set that with some white uh, embossing powder. So we'll get that put on there. And I wasn't trying to get it on there perfectly. I wanted that like kind of creepy looking <laughs> a little bit. You know when your embossing powder isn't perfect and it's just oh yeah. So anyways I was creating a fun Halloween scene. I was I had so much fun with this die set. So now I've got my little kitty. He's going to be behind the pumpkins, kind of like creeping around behind the pumpkins after dark. And uh, that's how it goes in my household. They like to creep around after dark. So I laid it out. I kind of knew where I wanted things. And I'm like, okay, this is perfect. So I'm putting um, some of the thin 3D foam squares in black on that. Uh, the back of the Happy Halloween, and then I have my images where I want them. So usually I take a picture. I didn't today. I wish I would have, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and put some of the Tombow permanent adhesive, and I'm going to get my cat about to where I think he was, and it was a little, little lower, but that's okay. And I wish I would have left my Happy Halloween tilted like that. I thought it looked awesome in editing, and I wish I would have done that. But because my other pumpkins have dimension, I'm just putting foam squares in the center of that pumpkin and I will lay it on the sides and then the foam squares in the center. We will get our sentiment put on and I moved it over just a scotch to try to get it as centered as best as possible. And there we have our cute Halloween card. I hope you enjoyed this video on ways to use this amazing set. Don't forget to head on over to the scrapbookpal.com YouTube channel and like and subscribe. We look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Happy crafting.